Leveraged option trading based on the Bitcoin ETFs started today. Welcome back, everyone. Let's talk about these uh, these options. As many of us know, options trading began today on the Bitcoin ETFs, right? Meaning that you would be able to purchase options based on the ETF's shares performance. Now, there's nothing inherently wrong with this, right? Like this is a th th this is a, another market tool that allows investors to hedge against future performance, whether positive or negative. I, I don't see anything wrong with this, right? Like th there's going to be a lot of people that are going to tout to you that, you know, the, these new options tools on Bitcoin, on the Bitcoin ETFs are somehow going to bring in trillions and trillions of dollars. But look, I, I'm not even going to speculate on that. The only piece that I can say is, is that it's definitely going to bring, again, more attention to the Bitcoin derivative products like the ETFs. And it's also going to bring more attention to Bitcoin. And of course, right, it, it really helps that this week alone, there was Marathon, there was Semler Scientific, MetaPlanet, and MicroStrategy, just this week alone, right, that, that went and what they did was, was that they issued shares, right, so essentially they're, they're creating debt from their company, and they're buying Bitcoin. So again, MicroStrategy was the first one really to set that playbook in motion. Uh, Michael Saylor and MicroStrategy have been the example for that. The options, the the this new product, the options product is a little bit different. And I'll explain why. What this this is what it reminds me of. And again, I could be completely wrong. I, I you know, like I'm not trying to be a truth teller here, where I sit here and tell you like this is the way it's going to be because of my amazing experience and intimate knowledge. Like that, that's not what this is. I, I'm just explaining the way that I see it from previous markets. And the reason I'm explaining this is because in the housing bubble, okay, in the 2007, 2008, the you know. The, the bubble that led to the massive mortgage crash, okay, what ended up happening was, was that there was a lot of these derivative products that were created, okay? Not just the options, right? But of course, these uh, essentially these good loans and these bad loans that were packaged into derivative products to be sold to investors. Now, the investor appetite is much bigger than people can imagine, Um and, and we proved that, I, I believe, during the housing crisis because, you know, you saw company valuations, right, that the companies that were offering these products, they, they absolutely skyrocketed. And of course, when everything is great, everything is great, and nobody thinks that the bottom is going to fall out from you. But essentially, right, you, you get to a point where, specifically in the mortgage crisis, right, it was great until it wasn't, meaning when all of a sudden, these subprime mortgages came time to renew. All of the interest payments jumped, okay? And a lot of these people who already couldn't afford their subprime mortgage were definitely not able to afford their house. Now, of course, you're wondering, you're like, well, Phil, what does this have to do with Bitcoin? This is not the same thing. This is not a house. No, you're, you're absolutely right. It is not a house. Um, what I'm saying is, is that human behavior doesn't change whether it's Bitcoin or it's a home. So the human behavior, the desire for more alpha, right? The human desire for greed, this isn't just going to change, okay? And in Bitcoin, I would even suggest that it gets hijacked, okay? Um, and the, the reason I'm saying this is because right now, everything looks great, right? Bitcoin is on these four-year cycles, they're predictable. We've seen them be predictable. And in most cases, many of us as Bitcoiners have essentially bet on the fact that these cycles are predictable. Now, doesn't mean that they can't become unpredictable at some point. But what I am trying to say is this. We are going to see significantly more derivative products on top of Bitcoin. And really, right, the, the thing about any of these assets is this, as long as the price, right, as long as the purchasing power and the, the perceived value of these assets continues to go up, everybody looks like a genius, 
Okay. Everybody who bought it looks like a genius. Everyone who's selling those options looking like a genius. I'm talking about the, the companies that are selling these option products, right? So they all look like geniuses. Um, the people that are making the trades as the price goes up, they all look like geniuses. Everyone does until the floor falls out, right? Until we see a correction. And the reality is, is that booms and busts are almost, I used to think that they were just a mechanism of broken money, but the more I stay in this space and the more I learn, the more that I believe it's, it's two pronged. It's not just broken money. That is the, the, um, one of the catalysts for booms and busts, but it's also human behavior and our over exuberance. And, um, I, I do think that we are going to see that in this cycle. I am not making this clip to bring everybody down or anything. I'm just trying to explain that we need to be realistic. Like in my mind, I'm, I'm just wondering at which point, right? What is the straw that breaks the camel's back? How many of these products can be created based off of Bitcoin? Right. And, and specifically every company who offers these products, they're all offering these products under the assumption that they hold the underlying asset, which is Bitcoin. Now, if we go back to the mortgage crisis, when it all collapsed, right, all of those, all of that paper, all of those derivatives, all of those subprime mortgage packaged products and all of that stuff, it was all garbage. All of it was garbage. Even the, the, the housing prices kind of took a slump, but guess what? The houses were still there. And a few years later, houses, housing prices went back to all-time highs. And of course, you can argue that that has to do with the broken money and the fact that we're losing our purchasing power. I, I get that. But the point is the underlying asset was not damaged, okay? And this is, to, in my eyes, what we're going to see here, right? Bitcoin will remain unscathed, um, but a lot of these financial tools that are being used right now, um, they may end up worthless. Um, now, of course, right? The thing about something like this, bubbles take a long time to build, okay? Now, especially when you have all of the market participants, I mean, if we go take, again, if we go back and take a look at the mortgage crisis, this wasn't just happening overnight, right? Like this took years and people got comfortable, right? People got comfortable. They were, they were happy. They thought that's it. You know, I can use my house as a piggy bank. It's value just continues to go up. I can continue to take money out. And at the same time, I can continue to refi at lower and lower interest rates, which totally blew up in many people's faces. Okay. So again, I'm not trying to be the bearer of bad news. I'm just trying to explain that based on what I've seen, we, as people, we get over exuberant, right? And then the tide washes out and then we see everybody who's swimming naked proverbially. Anyways, guys. Uh, yeah. So all of these financial products, fantastic. All of these derivative products bring more attention to the Bitcoin space. I'm not cheering on, uh, wall street or anything like that, but what some people have to understand, it's kind of a hard pill to swallow. This is part of hyper Bitcoinization, right? All of these dominoes falling, the, the legacy system, right? The legacy players essentially bending the knee in order to provide products in and around Bitcoin. So I know it doesn't seem necessarily like we're winning when it comes to that because we're all like F the state, but at some point there's, there's gotta be there's got to be some moment of euphoria where, where we're like, you know what? The state's actually bending the knee for us. This is, this is good. Let's see where this goes. Anyways, guys, that's, that's all I wanted to talk about today. I'll catch you tomorrow.